there's a fine line between cults and free speech. Where is that line exactly? It's hard to it's hard to know. I am all for free speech. Your right to swing your fist anywhere you want is unimpeachable. You're allowed to swing your fist anywhere you want and no one can stop you until you swing your fist right here at my nose. You can't do that because now it's not you exercising your right to swing your fist. It's you violating my right to not have my face punched, basically. But where do cults fall on that line? It's complicated. It's complicated because of something called undue influence. Again, something I talk about in my book at length. In fact, in the very first page, I think. Undue influence is basically getting somebody to do something without them being fully aware of the consequences of their actions. For example, a, you know, a kid steals a candy bar at five years old from a store. Do they really fully understand the consequences of their actions? Like, really? No, they don't. And that's why the shop owner usually takes the candy bar when they're discovered and you know, make sure that they get a good talking to, or even the shop owner gives them a good talking to somebody. Make sure they understand that this is not okay. This isn't good. By removing information, by kind of taking things away from the scenarios, cult leaders are basically doing that exact thing to the members. I'm sorry. Cult leaders are basically doing that exact thing to the members. They are removing information and um, convincing them to do something that, that they believe is correct. Convincing them that the thing they're doing is the right thing to do. Undue influence. Which is why I don't think that cult members are fully to blame, or in, in many cases to blame at all, for the things that they do. The cult leaders are to blame. Like Charles Manson. He convinced nine people, I think, to kill, who was it, Roman Polanski's wife and kid or something like that. I don't believe that Charles Manson put a finger on anybody, but he went to jail, and, and it was right that he did. I don't know if you guys have ever watched Charles Manson interviews, but I, I cleaned one up the best that I could. This is 30 seconds. He was asked, who are you? Like, what, like, what are you all about? This is after he had already been in jail for a while for encouraging nine people to kill somebody. He didn't do anything but act as a cult leader. That's it. And he went to jail for it. You still have no idea what you're about. Tell me in a sentence who you are. Tell me in a sentence who you are. <laughs> I'm a tramp, a bum, a hobo. I'm a boxcar and a jug of wine. I'm a boxcar and a jug of wine. And a straight razor if you get too close to me. And I'm a straight razor if you get too close. Charles Manson. Why is it that we can put this guy in jail? He very much needed to be there. Obviously. He didn't directly do anything. Charles Manson didn't. Why can we put him in jail, but not Romana Didulo? Look, if you look closely, maybe I can zoom in. I mean, it's too fuzzy, but I, he carved a swastika into his forehead. He was out of his mind, dude. This guy needed to be in jail. And you know who else needs to be in jail? For telling her followers to pick up arms against the government and telling people that she was going to put two bullets in their head for every person that picked up a needle to give an, a, you know, a, a vaccine, a COVID vaccine to somebody. She's going to put two bullets in their head. So every nurse out there better be careful. She should be in jail for these things, right? How is she not in jail for this? But she's walking along. This is Romana Didulo. She's walking with people on each side of her holding flags. 
quiet. They're holding flags of the queen of the Kingdom of Canada or whatever, right? And as they walk by, if you notice, they they pan the camera over to this building to show purple. There's purple in the building. And in her mind, that's a sign that, you know, this building stands with her or whatever. Oh, yeah, got it. She told them to get, quiet. like, get a picture of it or whatever. So I think it was, like, some... I don't know what happened here. There's some, the news was here for some reason. I don't think it was a disaster. This is where they were, right here. There they are. Queen, Your Majesty. Your Maj are you hearing this? Are you hearing what, what they're saying right now? This is where they were, right here. There they are. Queen, Your Majesty. Your Majesty to the left. She said, Queen, Your Majesty. Your Majesty to the left. How cringy. Can it possibly get? I, I like the cringe is so intense. I want to vomit. She needs mental help. This woman does. She needs mental help. Yes. I'm Queen Romana of Canada. How are you? How do I nice to meet you. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. How do I address you, Your Majesty? I'm well, I'm well. How are you? Can I do apologize? It's all right, it's all right. No need to apologize. Are you willing to go on an interview with the Queen of Canada? We're done for the day, but we have another crew that's replacing us right here. And they might use that stuff. How's that? Definitely, yes. And they're far too? They're just my replacement. We're just white, we're tired, we haven't eaten. And we're cold, and we're going to get back to the hotel. All right, provide. So they, they finished, you know, their interviews for the day, and now they're going to go home. Oh, this is painful. And we're cold, and we're going to get back to the hotel. All right, provide me your, uh, their contact information. Oh, he's right here, Michael. And his reporter and producer are around somewhere, so they'll be here shortly. There's a reporter around somewhere, so go find him, I think is what they said. She just said his name, Michael, because she was told his name by the last guy. He said, this is Michael, the cameraman, and there's a reporter that'll be here soon or that is here somewhere or something like that. So she says, Michael, I'm Queen Romana of Canada. Michael, I'm Queen Romana of Canada. How are you? Please, ready to meet you. How did you know my name? How did you know my name? Well, the the guy from like 30 seconds ago just told her his name. But of course. Oh. I have my uh, details. Uh-oh. Yes? Some guy just told her the name. Are you kidding me? And she's using this as like some kind of a like what like a boost an ego boost like oh i know everything i know everything and everybody how are you please ready to meet you how did you know my name but of course oh. i have my uh, details uh oh yes so michael i came here specifically looking for you Why? and your team Why? because i would like the entire country and the whole world to know that means that canada now has a new queen I came here looking specifically for you and your team to tell the whole world that Canada now has a new queen. How cringe is this? Oh, that was for the awesome Are you ready to do an interview? No, I'm agree. So, camera check. I don't need a call. Okay, no worries. No, no, no. I'm just your producer. Producer is back in the hotel. Like, they all closed up for the day. Where's the producer? He's back at the hotel. I'm just a camera tech. Uh, is this card? Yes, it is. I do not have this card. He's not a reporter. Uh -huh. he's, uh, he's just setting up. The reporter's okay, so going to be here a little bit later. All right, well, let, let, let uh, him set what? up, and then we can uh, uh, get somebody to talk to you. Business card, if you guys have any. Don't tell me Fox News doesn't get any business cards. I have some somewhere, but they're, they're in my, my, my messy office. Oh, well, you miss the office. Where's your office? My office is in Northern Virginia. Oh, he's from Northern Virginia? This is the opportunity you guys have to bring the story that Canada has a new queen. This is the first opportunity you guys have to break a story 
that Canada has a new queen. This is so cringy and sad, dude. Is this not mental illness? Is this not worthy of a mental health check? You know, Ronald Reagan famously closed like a bunch of uh, like mental health institutions in the 80s. We need to reopen those. We need to give this woman a mental health check, honestly. Like this is this is too much. How is this any different from Charles Manson and what he was up to? Seriously. She never did get their business card. Not that we've washed our hands of the situation or that we're not going to um, take any follow-up investigation. But that's how they feel. I and I understand, you know, it's certainly concerning, especially uh, for a small town. But um, we're certainly there. We're monitoring the situation. And she does not look happy to be in that seat. And making sure that if there is any indication of criminal activity, that we will be there and we will investigate that thoroughly. So it's not clear who sent these? At this point in time, that's part of our investigation. I'm sure that it was Romana Didulo who sent the cease and desists to the mayor and the everybody else. Or it was somebody in her name, part of her compound or whatever. It was her official group or whatever. I don't care who sent it. They put all the people in jail, didn't they, who... It, this is why the RICO Act exists. Of course, that's an American thing. It's not like a, uh, a Canadian thing. Rico was in, was created with the intent to be able to take out everybody all the way up the line. Somebody is told to murder somebody else, to take out a hit on somebody. The guy that pulled the trigger, the guy that hired, that paid the person, the guy that asked the person to hire the person, the guy all the way to the very top who nodded his head in the back of a bakery. I'm describing a real situation, Ferrara's Bakery in Little Italy in uh, Manhattan. The guy who nodded his head in the ba back of the bakery to approve the hit. Everybody, all the way up the chain, gets arrested. Like uh, 15 people for one murder. That's what the RICO Act was intended to do. Because organized crime had found loopholes in the system where there'd be one fall guy at most. Or they'd get like three people... And there'd be reasonable doubt because it could have been any of those three people. And if you don't have beyond reasonable doubt in a courtroom, you don't have a case. You know, mobs and gangs and everything, they've, they've found these loopholes and they've exploited them for years. So the RICO Act exists. Again, this is Canada. I don't know what Canada has. I don't know if they have an equivalent or what, but something needs to be done for real. I don't give a shit. Arrest everybody. Start arresting from the top. Arrest Romana Didulo and her little um, group of people uh, for sending these letters. And if the letters continue to come, then arrest the next little level of people down. And if they continue to come, arrest the next little level. This is exactly what happened with Charles Manson. Nine people killed some, some kid and some woman, I think. Charles Manson didn't lay a finger on anybody, and they arrested every single one of them. Why can't we do something like that with real genuine cult leaders and members who are genuine dangers to society, honestly? The RCMP says they can't make any arrests because they don't know who made the threats. Like, I don't care who made the threat. Arrest Romana Didulo. It was done in her name with her approval. And she didn't denounce it. She didn't tell people stop doing that. She said, yes, I stand behind it. 